Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna go ahead and create this design right here. It's a really fast and very easy one to make. We're essentially putting a photo inside of text. Um, this one is kind of a funny one. This one says happy Groundhog Day and there is a picture of a groundhog within the text. Groundhog's Day is the beginning of February so it's pretty early on in quarter one and so that is about when you would want to start thinking about making this type of design if you were going to. Um, so if you'd like to learn this technique uh, please do stick around. So as always, we're going to start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. I'm hoping this will be a nice quick video today. I'm going to show you a really easy technique and this one's going to be a little bit funny, hopefully. So I will be designing for a black backdrop again. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the background color and I'm going to go ahead and put black. And so now this is going to be a combination of text and photo where I am going to put a photo within repetitive text. And so for this one, I'm going to go ahead and write Happy Groundhog Day. Groundhog Day is February 2nd, so it is coming up with, uh, within a couple months at the beginning of quarter one. So if you want to make a design for it, now would be the time to start thinking about that. So now, got to be careful because there was a movie with the same name, and if you've seen the movie, you know that it repeats over and over and over again. So a fun way to do this would be to put something like Happy Groundhog Day repetitively over and over and over. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit T on my keyboard. So I've got my text box. I'm going to make this in all caps and I'm going to go ahead and put happy groundhog day and I'm going to put an exclamation point. Okay. So because I went ahead and put happy and the exclamation point and everything, uh, this saying here is not trademarked. You do have to be careful whenever if you're referencing anything that is trademarked, but this is pretty safe to use happy, grab, happy Groundhog Day. And so now that I've got this text, I'm gonna go ahead and pick the font I want, and then we are just gonna make it repeat itself all the way down the page. And so I'm gonna go ahead, I want something that's gonna be bold, but I want it to be narrowly spaced, and we can always space it together even more if we need to, because I'm gonna put a picture over it, so I want it to be as solid as possible. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put narrow for this. And as I'm searching narrow, I am looking for something that's sort of squarish and thick, okay? But it needs to be easy to read. So again, you don't want anything that's gonna look silly. Here's one that I like to use sometimes. So this is a nice thick one. And so you can see if I pull this out right there, um, it's bold enough that you can definitely see the layers. I can make it really big across the top. Um, it's narrow, it's got a cool design. So this might be a good one to go with. And so you can play around. I could spend a long time sort of picking what font I think looks the best. I wanna make this sort of a quicker video um, since I've had a couple of long ones recently. So let's just go with this font. And so from here, I'm just gonna duplicate it. So I'm gonna hit Control D and I'm gonna pull that down so that it's just right under the top one. And now I'm gonna hit Control D again, and it should just keep putting it down, just like that, all the way down until I get down to the bottom, hopefully, of the page, Control D. And look at that, they all just barely fit. And I mean just barely fit, but they do. So that's awesome. So that is going to be my frame. So happy Groundhog Day, and I'm just gonna put frame. And we will just go ahead and download this right now with a transparent background. And there I'm gonna have my frame. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a picture over the top. And so we're gonna use a clipping mask so that the picture actually shows up, hopefully, in all of the words, which is why they all have to be really close together. And they are pretty closely spaced here. So let's go to the left-hand corner where it says elements. And the hardest part is going to be finding an image of a groundhog that we like. So I can put Groundhog's Day, I can just put Groundhog. Oops, didn't spell it right. We can do this with photos, we can do this with graphics, it doesn't matter. Um, 
If you don't fill up the entire page, what you'll end up with will just be the white text. And so you can do it that way too. So there's a lot of different ways we can go about this. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at the photos first. And there's some cute ones. I kind of like this guy here. He's got a silly look on his face. Again, you want it to be nice and big and easily readable. So that one might be a good option. As I scroll down, and there's lots of funny ones. You don't want it to be too small because little details will get lost. There's a lot of gaps in here, so you want it to be nice and big, um, really zoomed in, and hopefully big enough that you can tell it's a groundhog. Um, and so lots of different ones that you can look at in terms of pictures of the animal. It would be cool if you had one sort of coming out of the ground, but we don't need to. It would be cool if we had one sitting in snow, but that's okay. Again, you can just sort of look, find whatever you like. Just make sure it's nice and big and fills the page, preferably lighter in color because you do need it to be able to be seen against this black background. So anything that you can get that you can zoom in real close, easily seen, nice and light in color, something like that might even work. Um, I'm just gonna pick some options here. Something like that, he looks pretty cool because he's really big and so that might be a good one too. Oh, here's a really big close-up one. Let me see here. Uh, magic recommendations. Let's see all for our magic recommendations. Uh, really close-up face there. Here's one coming out of the ground and so that's kind of what I'm looking for. Up oh, here's one standing up and he's just got the sky behind him. So that might work really well. Um, I don't even need a full body. I can just crop in on the head. So again, lots of different ones you can pick. And for the sake of not spending forever on this, I do just want to go ahead and just uh, pick one fast. I know it's so hard for me to make a decision here because I like them all. Um, let's go ahead. Of course, it did put it behind my text. So now to get out of it, I'm just gonna go have to send some of this text to the back so that I can easily grab my pictures and send you back. And so, and send you back. So now I got my photos. So which photo do I want? This one or that one? That one's sort of a side shot, but it has nice light around the sides. This one will probably lend itself pretty well to being narrow, but it is gonna be dark. But I do like the face on this one. I think I'm gonna go ahead and try this one here and see if it works. Make sure we send this to the front. Uh, problem is I send it to the front and then it sends it to the back of the rest of the text. Send to front, so now it's in the front. I'm gonna crop this sucker way down and send to front. So I want him to fill most of the page nice and big again because I am going to lose some of the detail in the text. Really make sure it fills most of the page good. Okay, I like the way that one looks. That's a really good close-up. Hopefully it's not too dark, but again, I can always put outlines around anything if I need to, to get the edges. And so I'd, I'd rather not do that because I don't want edges through the groundhog, but we've got options here. So let's go ahead, happy Groundhog's Day. And this is gonna be the mask that we're gonna use. I'm gonna go ahead and download this. And then we are gonna jump over to Photopea in just one second and do a quick clipping mask. Um, if you haven't seen any of my videos before, um, I go over this in pretty good detail in several of the videos, but I'm gonna make this really quick um, for this one. Here we go. And so I'm just gonna go ahead, jump over to Photo P. I'm gonna open from computer, and I am gonna go ahead and open my frame. And so here is my frame. It says Happy Groundhog Day right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead, File, Open in Place, and I'm gonna put my mask right over the top. And it's gonna bring the mask up. And now I'm gonna go up to the top. I'm gonna to move over to where it says layer. Click that about halfway down. It says clipping mask. I'm gonna click that. And it is putting my groundhog right inside my text. And so you can see exactly how that looks. You can kind of see the groundhog. You have to look far away. 
um, and that looks pretty good. So we're gonna go to File, halfway down, Export As, PNG, give it a sec, here we go. Happy Groundhog, I can always retitle this, it's not the frame anymore, Happy Groundhog Day. Um, it's a PNG, it's 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. I'm gonna leave everything the same and hit save. And now I can jump right back over to Canva. Now I can keep um, this here as a frame if I want to, because if I wanted to, I could put a lot of different um, photos over the top of it. Sorry, just getting rid of that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come down and add a page and this is where I'm gonna put my upload. So I'm gonna get rid of this. We're gonna go to uploads and I'm just gonna go ahead and upload my Groundhog Day design. Ooh, made a sale, love that sound. <laughs> Always a great sound to hear. Um, give it a sec, perfect. So once it's uploaded, we can just click on it. It will open it up and I have it on my page here. And so now what I can do is I can bring this all the way up to the very tip top and bring it all the way out. Really trying to fill the page. And so here we can see, if I look from far enough away, I can see the groundhog, so that is good. So I am sort of getting the picture of the groundhog out of that, but I am sort of losing some of the words here. You can see, especially in the dark areas, you don't quite see the words. Now that could be okay, because you can definitely tell what it says by looking across all of the different words. Um, if I want to, again, I can put outlines around this it might kind of mess up the look of the picture a little bit, but I'll show you how I would do that. I can go to Edit Image, Shadows. We've done this a lot before. And I can put a thin shadow around all of the letters. And so what it will do, if I go ahead and select white, let's say, and you can already see how it's really big. So maybe I want to bring it way down. Right now it's at a three and I'm gonna hit apply. And we will give this a second to finalize. And I'll see if that makes it look any better. Okay. It is gonna take a second and it'll kinda of, mm, clear up a little bit right now. It's a little bit grainy. because it's still sort of trying to finalize here, but we can see how that looks. But I can already tell, now I can read it. I can definitely read Happy Groundhog Day now that I put the white around it. I can still see the groundhog, so this is a good way to go with this. Groundhogs are a little tough um, for this design just because it's a little hard to read, but you can definitely see how you can use this method. There it is, now it's sharp. You can use this method for other designs. Okay, it looks better now that it's sharpened up a little bit. That took a while. There we go. So I can read it. I can see that it's a groundhog. It's a little bit funny because it's the repetitive happy groundhog day. You can do this again with any other type of design that you want. I've got this nice and centered here. And so now it is ready to download. I'm just going to call it happy groundhog day, uh, repetitive or repeating, repeat, repeating, whatever. Um, and I will download it. It'll be a transparent background. I'm just gonna download the second page here because the first one was my template and I'll hit download. Now you may have to try this with a few pictures to kind of figure out which picture looks best. Like I said, if it's got a lighter background, it's gonna really make it a little bit easier for the words to pop if you put it on a dark shirt, for example. So because I do like to design for dark, I would have preferred a lighter background, but I did really like the way that the face looked on this one here. So again, you can play with it. You can do graphics as well. So if you don't like the photos, you can do graphics. Same general idea, but that is how you would go ahead and make this cool repetitive design with the photo inside of it. Uh, again, if you have any questions about this technique, uh, feel free to ask and put it in the comments section below. I try to get back to everybody as quickly as possible. I um, hope you guys are doing well and I hope to see you guys again. That's all for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.